going up to a place called Hulleftio today. Uh, it's in the north of Sweden, about an hour's flight up. Now normally, that's an airport that gets a few SAS flights every day, and that's been it uh, for the past few years. But lately, it's a place that Ryanair has started flying to alongside its general expansion into Arlanda Airport. They're doing some domestic flights around Sweden. And so I thought, since Ryanair's an airline, I never fly. And honestly, I've avoided them. I've flown them once before. And Ryanair was about one fifth of the price of the usual SAS flight between Arlanda and Hulleftio for the kind of basic economy with a cabin bag setup. So I thought, let's take Ryanair up and SAS back down and see, is SAS really five times better to make up for the price difference? Come along with me and we'll find out. Check this out. It's a Carpetair Fokker 100 operating for Nordica on domestic flights within Sweden. A lot of unusual wet leases going on around here lately, but this is the most unusual combination I've seen. One thing that might shift your choice here is this. Arlanda has been dealing with staff shortages that have led to longer queues at security. This ended up taking about half an hour to get through. Not the end of the world, but I'm used to breezing through here. Of course, SAS would be subject to the same wait times, except if you have elite status with them, which I do. I'm used to having fast track on every booking with them. Ryanair will sell you fast track on this booking for $10 or so, but they don't make it easy to buy that on the spot. And you never know in advance if the queues will be long enough to be worth it. So this doesn't apply to everyone, but if you do have Starline status, you can potentially save $10 in half an hour or more by booking with SAS. Okay, Ryanair, let's do this. I've placed myself in the back of the bus here. The first surprise, the legroom is really quite okay. The seatbacks are horrible to look at with so much going on in your line of sight plus that awful yellow color. But the Boeing interior on this newish 737 is actually pretty nice. And the blue mood lighting even kind of goes with the Ryanair yellow on the bins. Middle seat free makes a big difference, of course, and it's only an hour's flight. This is perfectly adequate for that. The nearest exit may be behind you. The light to attract attention. Do not inflate your life jacket until you are outside the air. They turn this plane around fast, and I seriously doubt they had time to do much cleaning, but it all looks reasonably grime-free in here. An on-time departure ticks another box. The flight attendants seem cheerful and friendly. This is not nearly as bad as I expected. Let's go to Lapland. I almost never sit in the far back of an aircraft and I'd forgotten just how much sound the engines make back here. 
and the plane just sways and bounces a lot more in any kind of turbulence. It's generally true that you're more likely to get an empty seat or seats next to you in the very back, but I don't know if it's worth it. What do you say? Well, this is fun. They're selling scratch cards. How can I not buy a pack? They say proceeds go to charity, so this is less of a dumb move than it might appear. The lavatory is very average, but it works just fine. I'm guessing the new Max 8-200s that they sometimes fly on this route have the more cramped and uncomfortable version of this. You can't escape that Ryanair yellow even in here, though. These seats are pretty hard, especially where your head goes. It's like putting your head back on a piece of plastic, basically. Okay for an hour. I wouldn't want to do a longer flight than these, though. They came around to offer a service on this short run, all for purchase, of course, and the three euro coffee was surprisingly good. After just a short while, it's time for descent and landing into a very gusty Hualeftio airport. Okay, Ryanair, I'm fairly impressed. While I'm sure things don't always go as smoothly, this was a very easy, relatively comfortable trip. So, can SAS beat this? Time to find out. SAS flies a variety of planes to Holeftio, but most often it gets the A320neo. That's a newer model than the 737 Ryanair mostly sends here, so it's not a perfect comparison. But since this is the plane you're likely to fly when you choose SAS, I'd say it's fair. I'm back in the second to last row to try and make this as scientific a comparison as possible. And I have to say right off the bat, I feel so much better in here. The cabin colors are calming, and everyone seems to be calmer on board as a result. The flight ends up about equally full as the Ryanair one. It's still that much better if you ask me. These seats are similarly padded to Ryanair, but the big difference is at your head there's actual padding not a slab of hard plastic covered by fabric. Legroom is very similar with maybe a subtle edge for SAS. I forgot to bring the ruler. 
but the winglet view is nicer, both for shape and color. Highly subjective, but hey, that's what you get. As we take off, the difference in noise is clear. The 737 was so loud back here. The 320 Neo feels about half as loud, much more relaxing. And SAS offers free coffee and tea, so they win there versus Ryanair, which charges for everything. You would still pay for this bottle of water, though I get it free because of status. I only wish SAS would stop handing out plastic cups without asking first. Would you pour a small bottle of water into a cup to drink it? I didn't think so. It just causes unnecessary waste. This flight passes quickly and easily as well. Though again, it is definitely more uncomfortable in turbulence in the back of the plane. Doesn't matter which model aircraft. Like I mentioned earlier, these flights cost very different amounts for more or less the same thing. The Ryanair flight was just 315 Swedish kroner, or about 30 euros. SAS, 1,479 kroner, or about 142 euros. 
that's just about five times the price. So, which would you choose? I think the answer is pretty obvious. And yet. Is SAS worth five times more in price? Of course not. It was never going to, right? Especially on a domestic one-hour flight. It doesn't really matter. Both of these airlines are offering a competent, safe operation, from what I can tell. And yet, I so prefer SAS. I think I would take them, even if the fare were higher. The question is just how much higher. The other factor to consider is the fact that Ryanair has maybe a few flights a week on that route, whereas SAS has often a few a day. So if you want to have any kind of flexibility or choose the dates you want to fly, it can be tough to choose Ryanair. But if you're very flexible and you just want to get there as cheap as possible, Ryanair is doing a good job at that. And I think that's what they're known for. But for me personally, I'll try to take SAS. Would I pay five times the fare for them? No, I hope I wouldn't. I hope I wouldn't, but they're definitely my preferred option. So anyway, back in Stockholm, for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.